Whoa, good morning dudes. I'm back again. Today's video is gonna be a little bit a little bit artsy, a little bit designy, you know. Gonna take a step back from the functionality for a bit. Okay, here we are, I'm gonna get into a fight. Uh it looks similar to where we left off. The only difference is the platform that they're fighting on. You can see it's the the prison theme. Now I've been having a lot of trouble actually trying to visualize what I want the battles to look like. So I'll go back to the the Photoshop for this one. This is uh, kind of like what I mocked up a while ago and it was very quick. You can see I just pinched the grass tiles from the background, made a little little platform. Yeah, I didn't put much thought into it and now I'm having real trouble visualizing what I want the battles to look like. Well, I was anyway, so I'm over the past few days because I thought maybe what I could do is, well, the, the platform thing with the faded background wasn't looking so great. So I thought I'd stretch kind of the battle platform to be the whole background. We'll see how that looks. So I'll, I'll boot that up now. And I got this and it's a bit better. The problem is simply reusing the tiles of the, the map, it kind of doesn't make much sense because the characters are staying the same scale and we're supposedly zooming in on in, into the battle but now they're like spread across several of the same tiles it wasn't enough of a kind of transition for me I don't think I can just reuse the same tiles and make a uh, platform out of it and be happy with how it looks but at the same time I didn't want to do like Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest or most of those RPGs do is that in inside the battle transition I'll grab one up yeah, so Final Fantasy uses these stages, and um, yeah, very early Dragon Warrior, like it's it's just completely black with the UI. I quite like the SNES remake of two. I think this is. See, it's also got this kind of like scene. You can still see in this one, it's got the background, whereas in the Final Fantasy versions, you know, it's got like a whole whole artwork um, covering up the back, and it's it's very uh, different from the floor that you were on. I quite like Dragon Quest 1, how um, you can still see parts of like the map where you were so it's not like you're jumping to a completely new scene, it kind of just materializes on top of you and that's where I was kind of going with, with my design but I can't really think of ways to make it look good without drawing a whole piece of artwork like this for instance uh, and I want to avoid doing that, I don't want to commit so much to doing that because I don't know how well I can do that and uh, it is a lot of work and it's always something I can do later but I don't want to start doing that earlier but anyway I looked at the earlier the earlier Final Fantasy uh, particularly Final Fantasy 3 on the NES and I actually thought this was kind of neat so there's a little bit of like a wall to match kind of like the zone you're in this is like a cave obviously but then most of it's still kind of black and the the enemies and the players contrast very heavily off it and then you've got the UI stuff at the bottom. And I actually found find this quite appealing and kind of a little bit of a, a, a middle ground so I can kind of do some artsy stuff. Um, these are actually specifically 64 by 64 tiles which are twice as big as the, the floor tiles in the actual game. So there is a sense of that you're zooming up into kind of a battle scene and it opens up and you play it out. Whereas like walking on the overworld this stuff isn't exactly drawn to scale, it's kind of like a grid representation of kind of the world. It's not meant to be immersive to the point where, you know, everything's to scale and you're meant to literally feel like you're in the world. So I actually thought, you know, maybe this is a good place to start. And it's good to start simple because taking simple things that you've gone with throughout the game and then redoing them to be more complicated later, um, if I get a better idea or, you know, my art skills improve or something, um, that's easy to do. It's harder to do the other way because if I do a lot of front-loaded artwork and I make these really nice battle backgrounds, I make like six or seven of them, you know, and they're really great. You have to keep up the standard throughout the game, otherwise, you know, it, it'll look very jarring if early on I had great quality backgrounds, but then I couldn't maintain that level of quality throughout. So. And this is a common theme with everything that I'm doing in this game, is that I'm very much looking for simpler designs to start with that I am confident I will be able to 
iterate out as I develop the game so I can scale it for content because I have a lot of great ideas for how the game will play and innovating on these old RPG systems that I love so much. And so after taking a look at that, what I did was I'll try and recover this. I think that's what I had. I'll take off the grid. Uh, this is like right out of Final Fantasy 3. This is, you know, I kind of just took ones that had colors kind of similar to my prison. And I thought this was quite neat. You know, it's not a big ask for me to do a 64 by 64, a 32 by 32, sorry, I'm wrong. Pattern that, you know, that you just repeat across the top. It kind of gives a theme to the battleground. It's not as bare as if I just kept it all black. And I've got plenty of space for the actors. And then, you know, I've put the UI stuff down here. Um, I've expanded on the UI a bit. The, the pink's a pretty ugly color for the... Um, I wanted to separate it so this one that's out in front is like the the focus right because these are where you'll be choosing the menu options this these are simply mock-up names for the enemies and this is your party with their action time boss and you can see i've got these little ui things up here for each party member and i can fit five which is what i'm going for i want five party member battles i've lined them up properly before i had them lined up so that the top was a bit in front to give a bit of depth to the battlefield i have mechanical ideas for front row mid row and back row later so i wanted i wanted that to be clearer so now they're kind of lined up in more traditional style the enemies are horribly out of place so i'm going to take those out and that's probably what we're going to work on today i think we're going to try to draw some enemies so that we can kind of complete this envisioning of what the battling will look like yeah, and then from this I wanted one that appealed more to my my kind of prison, so I mocked up that very quickly. It's just they're kind of bigger additions of the walls that were already in the prison. This bottom bit here that's very scrappy and it's weird and then it kind of gets consistent over there. I didn't really know where I was going with that, but I gave up out of frustration and the important thing is the walls and stuff, right? And so this more closely matches the prison, but the colors are actually a bit different. I will also go over that. Hmm. I probably should have sequenced this better bit. Yeah, well, I'm just going to show you. Um, ding. Yeah, so this is a screenshot from the game as it is now, and I very much didn't like the color. It's just not interesting. So what I tried to do was play around with the the saturation a little bit and the uh, the contrast rather, and also the the hue values of it to try and make it look a bit more interesting. Yeah, uh, this is a similar screenshot, it's not exactly the same, but what I did was, uh, you can see I've gone over the colors. I've made the the brighter parts of the brick contrast quite a bit more. This is all very kind of distant and bland, and so I've tried to make it stick out a bit more. It kind of matches more closely to how bright our, color, our characters are, but even the characters I'm not super happy with in terms of how they're colored, but they were they were lesser of the offenders, so. But yeah, and I've, I've mixed up the hue values a lot more, and it, it more closely resembles a the kind of older RPGs, which I'm gonna... Yeah, this. Uh, not a game I ever played, but one that people fondly remember. But I, I very much like the use of color here, and part of it is, well most of it is because of the res restrictions on the on the NES. You can see from the Final Fantasies 1, 2, and 3 on the NES kind of have the same distinct limited palette look as this kind of does. I think this is very nice. And I quite like my game to look something like this. I guess as I'm doing more research and deciding what I want, it's very much gravitating towards being kind of a a NES era fan game almost, even though I never intended to. I didn't start the project saying that, oh, I'm going to make a game with the restrictions of a NES. It's going to be sick. Kind of like Shovel Knight, I guess. The use of colors and stuff I'm very fond of, and I'd like to kind of learn how to make palettes as provocative as this yeah we'll see so my tiles were looking very boring so this is kind of step in the right direction i think the colors themselves are more interesting coloring i'm not so great at so we'll just have to see where we go but anyway so it'll jump from this into a battle looking like this which i think is a much nicer jump than what we had before what i'll actually be doing today is getting some enemies because that's one of the last kind of things i haven't completely conceptualized or even started and you know what, I think Nest Era Final Fantasies are a good place to start. So I'm going to get up the stuff I was looking at before. The Nest Era Final Fantasies are Final Fantasy 1, 2, and 3. So I've got 1, 2, and 3. And you can kind of see, being the Nest ones, they've got very distinct 
coloring you know they're, they're obviously working around the limitations of the palettes that they had access to and it makes them quite striking in my opinion i've also got final fantasy 4 this has unfortunately a very eye bleeding cyan background but this is final fantasy 4 on the super nintendo and once they had you know much more freedom with the colors you can see they kind of they look a lot more detailed and more distinctive coloring and there's kind of less repeats of individual monsters as well because they had you know a lot more memory on the super nintendo compared to the nintendo so i want to see if i can make enemies that are kind of as striking as the NES era ones i really like the strange emphasized colors that they use how they kind of navigated around the limits that they had yeah so what i'm going to be doing today is i'm going to make a few enemies myself or I'm gonna to try to. To help me out at the start I may end up using enemy palettes that they have here until I kind of learn how to organize the color palettes myself and figure out what kind of colors I'm gonna be using. Colors aren't that important right now that's something that can change quite easily later that's why I'm not too too worried about literally just kind of ripping off the stuff that's already done here. I want to be able to kind of freely draw my own enemies and see how I go with that. I'll, uh, I'll have a go at it and then I'll let you guys know how I did. Cool. Oh, okay. Hey, fellas, I'm back. Uh, I've done a little bit of progress. It's actually been real slow going. This kind of enemy art is something I'm, I'm very not good at. I've got kind of five dudes here. You can kind of see I've got this, like, grid in the background. It's kind of like how I envision the, the enemies will position themselves. You can kind of see these smaller enemies are constrained to their grid square. And these are two by one enemies so that they're meant to be a vertical thing. You know, for bosses and stuff they might use like two by two grid squares or even like a three by three area. I'm very much learning about the constraints. Reference, I'm mainly using the, the Final Fantasy 3 enemies here. So this is the last of the kind of area that I'm very much interested in and so I've been looking at the enemies and I've just been like keying out some of the the colors that they've been using and um, I was pretty quick to realize that well first of all they almost all use four colors and the way the colors seem to work more interestingly you can kind of see in the way I've separated them out is that for the body of the enemies they use two colors two similar colors yeah they're, they're two levels of light on the enemy um, so for instance this kangaroo turkey looking dude primary colors are these two oranges right and he's got the he's got it like all squared out so he's kind of looks like a he's got like a, a cheetah kind of design going you know and for this muscly dude next to him it's the two gold shades and the shading's very used to emphasize the muscles on the dude it's very good art and then it's got two extra colors and these are like accent colors they don't really work as two different shades of a color rather they're standout features so like on this muscly dude here the white is only used for his teeth so they really stand out and then the the green is like uh, his eyes and his claws and he's kind of got a horn thing going and for some enemies it does it's like so the the green and blue they're kind of similar tones as well and they also done shading on the the mossy stuff around him yes yeah, so that's most enemy there are a select few enemies that actually use five colors which is a bit confusing i don't know why it's so few enemies that use five like uh, this enemy is is really bizarre uh, and you can see it's got five colors but it's still the same kind of rule it's got the golds are the the main skin tones here and then all these other uh, outstandingly different colors that aren't used for shading although the green does dip in a bit with the shading on the feet and stuff yeah so i'm learning here and you know what at the end of the day it's all about learning but yeah i'm having a go you can see my art is very bad <laughs> compared to like the the levels of the shading detail on these is really great i really want to get better as with everything I attempt, the important thing is, is to just get things on the board and then iterate over it over time, you know? Yeah, I'll keep going and then I'll check back in. Bleh. Ooh, I'm back. I'm bloody pooped, dude. I've been bending, I don't know, I spent a bunch of hours today drawing up dudes. Uh, this is most of them. Big birds using up most of my room here. Cool, I think that's all of them that I made today of varying sizes. Uh, the gigantic bird is the last one I worked on and uh, <laughs> it's got quite an interesting palette going for it. Uh, large size was quite hard and I think one thing that made it hard with the bird that I got here is that a lot of his body doesn't have a great amount of detail. 
I've had to use like a lot of thick shading and it kind of makes it stand out a bit like if I go to the sheet I'm referencing here all of the the bigger sprites and none are as big as that I don't believe but like even the bigger ones like this dragon for instance is a good comparison like it's it's bigger than these but the the level of detail is constant you can see there's a lot going on with these scales it's actually a really crazy dragon you know when you look close up to it, it but the um the important thing here is I went in really not knowing what I could would be able to produce using this style and the first few things I did were to do humanoid characters and you know after the the first the soldier dude I was like eh he's not so good you know I kind of just went at it and you know this is one days of artwork here and not knowing what I can do and oh, we've got a few enemies here. You know, when the goal is to make a game um, you really need to compromise with yourself you can't go for perfection because even if I did manage to draw perfection here there's no way I could maintain that standard it wasn't all first try success like uh, I'll show you one of the scrappy things that I kept was I was going for like a big humanoid earlier where is he this and so you can see where I was going with the pose and he was going to be a step bigger than this guy and I was working on it and I was getting it down but I think it had the same problem as my bird here in that it's too big too big without great ideas of how to fill up the the gaps in detail so yeah you know it's not all just perfection from me a lot of times I'll start something I'll try and put a lot of work into it and I just can't visually get it working so I just I dip on it and try again you know no idea what I'm gonna do tomorrow I'll deal with that when I get there you guys have a good one. I'll catch you on the next episode, dude. Game on, you know. Okay, bye.